Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. It is time for fig cuttings and I don't know if I mentioned it last season or not that I wasn't going to start any more figs but if I did I lied. Uh, I am cutting back though. I've got way too many figs at the moment and I need to start cutting back on the amount of new figs I get and get start getting rid of some of the figs that I have because it is starting to get a little bit too much to manage. Uh, but I did want one variety in particular called Des Detres Esplet, I think you pronounce it. But it's known here as DTE. So if you're a fig grower, you might have seen that acronym. Fig growers love to use acronyms. So DTE is what we call it. And that is one variety that seems to be the most popular in our area for fig growers, aside from the obvious Desert King. It wasn't too hard to find that variety locally because a lot of people are growing it. Uh, but I've got a couple of fig cuttings of that and that was going to be my only variety that I was going to be growing this year. And the person I got it from talked me into getting a couple more. So one of the reasons why people like DTE so much in our area is because it's pretty split resistant. It's supposed to be a similar tasting fig to Ronde Bordeaux, which is really popular as well. Unfortunately, Ronde Bordeaux does tend to split quite a bit. So it's nice to have an alternative to that. Uh, DTE is also supposed to be really productive as well as a fairly early variety and also cold hardy. So that seems like a pretty ideal fig for our climate here in the Pacific Northwest zone 8B. And another one I got talked into getting is the Moro de Caneva. I think I did try rooting that one a few years ago and it ended up not making it. So. Uh, he talked me into getting that one. Moro de Caneva is another one that's pretty cold hardy and also rain resistant so it doesn't split very easily. So those are a couple traits that are something to look for in our climate. And then the other one that he got me to try is called St. Martin. And I don't think that one has really made the rounds in our area yet. I think he's the only one that's really growing it that I know of. And he Talked me into getting that one because it's another one that's really cold hardy and it seems to get a little bit colder where I'm at than everybody else. So cold hardy figs is something that I'm really looking for and also the rain resistance, which this one also seems to be. So I'm looking forward to trying out these three varieties and hopefully we have some good rooting success. Before we get our cuttings rooted, I'm just gonna give them a good clean and disinfect them in a bleach solution. I'm going to start by using a fragrance-free, clean dishwashing detergent. And I'm just going to spread a little bit on the, the cuttings. And then just give them a little bit of a brush. Clean off any dirt and grime, any algae, moss, fungus that might be growing on them. I've got a solution here in this tray of 10 cups of water and 1 cup of bleach. So we're going to put our cuttings in here and just let them soak for about a minute and that will hopefully kill off any bad fungus or any bad bugs that might be living in the cracks. Okay, time's up. So now I'm just going to take these out. We want to make sure they're completely dry before we move on to our next step. All right, our cuttings are all nice and dry and there's a couple reasons why they need to be completely dry before we proceed. Um, one is for marking them. So some of these are already marked with a, a white marker, so I'm not going to bother with those. Um, two of these are marked with some blue marking, which is a little bit hard to read. So I'm going to be remarking those. This one is the Moro de Caneva. So I'm just going to put MDC for short up here towards the top. All right, and then this other one, this is the St. Martin. And we're going to just put SM for short here towards the top. Now we got to let those two dry. So I've already filled up some containers with some medium here. I've got three of these with potting soil. I normally use Pro Mix for fig cuttings, but I couldn't find any this year. So we're going with the Sunshine Mix number four potting soil, which is supposed to be very similar. It is pretty heavy on the perlite, which is really good for fig cuttings. I've also got one container here that just has perlite and vermiculite. I have had success rooting figs with just perlite and vermiculite in the past. I'm going to do one of the DTEs in potting soil and the other one in the perlite vermiculite mix and see which one roots better. Now, next thing we need to do is decide if we need to trim our cuttings. So this one here is the perfect size. This is exactly how 
Um, I like it. We've got one, two, three, four, maybe five nodes on this one, which is just perfect. So we're not going to do any trimming on that one. Um, the other DTE is a little bit thinner. The nodes here at the bottom are really far apart, which isn't really ideal. So I'm going to shorten this one up. I probably could get two cuttings out of this if I really wanted to, but I don't really need that many cuttings. We're just going to cut fairly maybe a half an inch below this node here. Okay, our cutting is nice and green, so that's a good sign that it's still alive. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, so about seven nodes on this one still, so this is still really good. The nodes are a lot closer together, um, so we're going to set that one aside. And then here's the St. Martin. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven nodes on it, and the bottom one is pretty far apart. So I'm going to just trim off that bottom node here. The last one here is the Moro de Caneva. This is another one that has pretty big spacing on the, the bottom two nodes. So I'm just going to cut off this last node here. And we're still left with quite a few nodes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight nodes. So I think that is the perfect size for these four cuttings. Next thing we're going to do, and another reason why we want our cuttings to be dry, is because we're going to wrap this parafilm or grafting tape around the top half of our cuttings and that will keep the humidity in which will help encourage rooting but the reason we want our cuttings to be dry for this is because we don't want to trap in any extra moisture um, under the tape or it could cause some mold so i'm going to start here at the top of the cutting and you can stretch this stuff pretty pretty good um, especially if it's warm if you have a really cold room then it does not stretch as easily so we're just going to put a layer of tape around the top few nodes okay so the bottom half is going to go under the the potting soil and the top half will be exposed i'm going to do the same thing with this one now this one has an apex bud on the top, so we do need to be a little bit careful that we don't break that off. I do like to leave at least one or two nodes under the potting soil, so we're going to leave those two alone. And you can barely see the the writing underneath the tape so that's important so you know which is which here's another one that's got the apex bud up here okay we've got two nodes at the bottom there that we'll put under the potting soil next we need to score the bottoms and that will help the roots to come out so i like to use the sharp edge of the pruners and just shave that off like that so you could see there's some dark green exposed there that is the perfect amount if you go too far it'll be really light green or white but you want it to be just enough that you've got that dark green color showing so i usually do maybe three three of those and roots will come out of those cracks. Now the next thing we're going to do is I've got some Clonex. Here. This is a Clonex rooting hormone so that just helps with the root development. So we're just going to take our cutting and make sure where we put those cuts that we get this gel all around that area. And then I'm just going to do that with each one. Now we are ready to get these into the potting soil. So instead of just jabbing it in there, I'm going to pre-drill a hole so that it doesn't wipe out all of the rooting hormone that we just put on there. So I'm just going to use a pencil just to make a small hole about the width of the, the cutting. And then we'll just 
put that in there as deep as our tape goes. And then just kind of pat that down. And we're done. Here's our perlite and vermiculite mix. So we're going to do the same thing with that one. And by the way, I did pre-moisten the potting mix and the vermiculite and perlite mix. So it's not bone dry. I might add a little bit more water to this one. So this one is going to be a little bit thicker cutting. And our last one. It's about 60 degrees in this room, which is a little cool. So I'm going to be using a heat mat on these fig cuttings until they start rooting. And then I'll move them under the light once they start leafing out. So I've got the heat mat set to, I think, 75 degrees. And we're going to put our sensor here into, we'll put it in the middle here so that our thermostat controls the heat. So normally I like to cover the bin with my fig cuttings, but this time I'm going to give it a try without covering. There's not really a need to keep moisture inside because the, the cuttings are wrapped, so they're not going to get dried out. And we'll just monitor the soil to make sure it doesn't dry out and give it a little bit of water as needed. So hopefully within a few weeks we'll see some roots. All right, before I let you guys go, I just wanted to let you know there is a fig cutting giveaway going on right now for the month of February by Ivy Organics. If you're not familiar with that giveaway, they do this every year for the month of February and they give away a ton, I mean, thousand, over a thousand fig cuttings that they're giving away. Um, but you can enter on their Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter accounts. And I'll post a link to the video that they talk about the giveaway in the description of this video. But they've got, I don't know, 50 to 80 different varieties that they're giving away, as well as, I think, 1,500 at least fig cuttings, which is a crazy amount. I've entered the giveaway every year for the past several years, and every year I've won some cuttings. I decided to opt out of the giveaway this year, and I'll let somebody else win instead. Um, but if you do win, you do get to pick which varieties that you want from what's available, which is a really cool um, thing. But right now, I don't need any more, so um, I'm going to pass. If you enter the giveaway, I wish you luck, and I hope you get some awesome cuttings and have good luck reading them. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.